Hey, what's up, everyone? Um, welcome to my first uh, tutorial on R. I'm super excited to start uh, this series. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be like every week or whatever. I probably won't be able to do that just with everything going on um, this summer with my job. So, but I'm excited to do some, and I'm going to start off today with a tutorial how to make shot charts in R. Um, I'm going to do an example with NBA. I think I'll do Kevin Durant recent games, and then I'll go into college. Uh, basketball, so I'll probably do someone from Syracuse just to make it easier. Um, but yeah, thanks to my guy McKay. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be tweeting this or put on it. Well, we've decided to collab. Uh, he'll be putting it on his YouTube channel, which thank you to him for reaching out about it too, because he has an already awesome collection of tutorials with his primarily being in Python, um, which is another language. And he does pretty much soccer stuff, but Pretty much anything you, uh, any tutorials you can apply to a different sport. So um, even if you aren't a huge fan of soccer, go over and definitely try them out because uh, you can learn so much just from going through those tutorials. And um, he's awesome at them and, and really communicates well. So uh, yeah, from here, I'll just jump into it. So um, if you guys want, I could uh, um, attach below a link to, to how to download R. If you want, I can make a video on that. Um, It'll be really short, but um, first we'll start off with, so R and packages um, are just things that you can pretty much use for whatever. So first package is ggplot2, which is a really famous or popular um, plotting package for graphics, which I use. Um, then I use a Mac, by the way, and control return runs just one line. So we will load tidyverse next, which is to transform data. Um, if you need to change it or, or create new columns, stuff like that, uh, which we will use to like filter the data. So then next is MBA stat R, which is a really popular um, package for MBA data. Um, there's a ton. So if you go over to packages um, all the way down to, uh, where's it at? MBA. So MBA stat R, this means it's loaded, which I did. Um, and these are all the functions in the package. Uh, just primarily get anything you want from stats to historical data on pretty much anyone. Um, so we will load that. Then dev tools, which we use to sometimes download um, or install packages from GitHub, which we will do for uh, the NCA hoop R package, which I will be using to get the NCA data. Um, so this downloads right from GitHub library. Again, that loads the package. Um, and then library extra font is a package to download um, fonts for the plotting, uh, which I usually use. I use Comic Sans, um, just kind of like a, a cool plot to, or a cool font to add, um, kind of gives it a nice touch. And then library calplot, calplot um, I use to, to override the, graphic I make and then just make sure everything in the background is one color because sometimes um, graphics can get funky. So we will load that. All right, so now all of our packages are loaded. And then first, after this, we need to create our court. Um, so I believe Owen Phillips, I think I, I've, it was a while ago, I started making courts. Um, and I believe this is from a tutorial he had. Uh, he's the goat at basketball viz. So um, make sure to check him out on Twitter. I'm sure you've already seen some of his work um, and I can put his Twitter in the, in the link below um, too. So first thing, uh, circle points. This is just a function that um, takes the dimensions that we'll add in and um, creates the, the circles on the court. And then these are all Court dimensions in line. So the width of the court will be 50, height will be 47. So the full court is 94, but we're only making half a court. So it will be 47. Um, the key height, inner key width, outer key width, backboard width, um, backboard offset, uh, pretty much just a bunch of variables that we need to run. Like I said, Owen Phillips had an awesome tutorial on this um, and you can look into it more. I'm not gonna talk too much about this. Um, and then these are themes that we make for our chord that we will type into our functions. Um, I believe this is the one Owen uses. Uh, this was a secondary one he added, and then I created this one on my own. 
um, that I use. So we will load all of these. Um, and then here's the court or plot court, which is the function we will use in our ggplot to make the court. And it combines this circle points function in all of these dimensions we, we had up there. Um, so yeah, the court, court points. So this is the perimeter, the outer key, the backboard, um, circle, the top of the circle for the foul, um, bottom of the circle for the foul line. This is the hoop. This is the restricted area, uh, the three-point line. And then these bind, this binds everything together to create the court points. Um, so yeah, I won't spend too much time on this because you, all you will have to do is just um, run this, uh, what's it called? Run this chunk of uh, code, um, which in Mac is, I believe, shift control return. Uh, it runs the whole chart chunk in this R markdown. So like I said, you can open it here, um, come all the way down. And then at the end of it, we have our plotting function. Um, so these are kind of stuff I use in my plots, but you can change it once you um, make your own uh, outside of this, but this is just run to make sure that everything uh, comes together as one, as like one court. So we can, like I said, shift control return and it runs this whole chunk of code. Um, so now we have our plot court function right here. And we will now be ready to plot. First, we have to get our data. So we will go to NBA data. Um, so this first little thing using NBA stat R, the function team shots um, is down here. Once again, we're over in NBA stat R's package description. Uh, so team shots, get team season shot charts. Uh, there's several things you could, um, I don't know, what's the word, kind of like filter for. Um, so you can filter for teams. And we'll do the Brooklyn Nets 2021 and then regular season. And then we'll pipe this. So um, if we run this, it will just run it in the environment or in this um, markdown file. Uh, so we need more than that. We need to pipe it back into a data frame that we can work with. So if we run this, uh, it might take a little bit um, just because it has to get all the shots. All right, let's see, here we go. Now you see it up in the right, I'm gonna move myself. Um, it popped up in our data frame. So now we have all the shots the Nets have taken this year. Um, so we have year season, slug season. Um, pretty much you can go through this and kind of look into this. Um, so here's what we'll be using is our X and Y locations of shots, uh, seconds remaining distance shot of the shot. Um, and then this will also use is shot attempted or is shot made. So if we go back, I'll move myself back. So we, we're making... So in this tutorial, we just want to make a, a shot chart for one game for one player. I mean, based on the, the tutorial, you guys can probably um, figure it out yourself, but I'll just focus on one player. So we called it, oh, my bad. So this should be Nets. So we have the Nets data, right? And then this is called piping. So basically, I'll put these on one line. Um, so we are taking this data frame and then this command will tell you to look into this data frame. So then filter, we will use to filter the data. Um, so it will be a function or not a function, um, a command. And as you see, all the players' names are under the column name player. So we want name player, um, not equals to, but uh, is a double equal to, which basically tells you to go in and find that player's name, um, and Kevin Durant in parentheses. And then, then, then we will pipe it again. So if we run this, this will give us all of his data, like I said, but this is only in the environment, so all of Durant shots. And the way the NBA API is set up, um, so our, our court um, 
dimensions are a tenth of what their data is. So I believe their X is from negative 250 to positive 250, but we need negative 25 to 25. So this will just take care of that and we'll divide them by 10. So if we run all of that back into Durant, once again, control return, this will give us all of Durant shots up here. So now um, also NBA, our dimensions are a little weird. Um, their shots are flip-flopped. So if it's on the right side of the court, um, it would pop up on the left side of our court, just the way our dimensions are set up. So we just want to um, multiply all of our X ver or all of our X shot locations by negative one. So it would just flip it. Um, and then this will send it back into the same column. So we are now ready um, with all of Durant's shots. And then, so we wanna now look into one game specifically. Um, so this, not funky, but you can kind of get around this several ways. So I'll go to Chrome, um, Kevin Durant, game logs. Um, so like, the data set goes off dates. Um, that's one way you could filter. So where is it at? Um, I go by it. Oh yeah, date game. So it's year, month, date. Um, and I believe we'll pick a game that uh, we had a great game. So we uh, looks like a better shot chart just for the aesthetic 2020-2021 season. Um, let's see what game you had the most threes in. Okay, so you had seven threes against the Bucks um, on April 2nd. So next we can go in. Sorry, my laptop is completely open now. Um, so we'll take our Durant data. Once again, pipe it and then filter. So filter by 2021, April 2nd. So I'll run it first in the, in the environment. And you can see um, 33 shots, it should match up. Yep, took 33 shots right here. So that's perfect. Then we will send it back into a data frame that we can now plot with. I, I, you can call it whatever, I usually call it final and then whatever it was before, just to make sure I, I know it's the final data set I will be using. Um, yeah, so now we'll go into plotting. Um, all right, so first thing we do, um, I kind of covered it up, so just so we can go step by step. So here's our plot court function. So we will plot court, um, and then our court themes, like I said, I made my own. Uh, so you could do equals or the dollar sign. Um, mine was PPT, which stands for PowerPoint, because sometimes I throw them into PowerPoint, add stuff there, and then, since we are using MBA data, um, use short three. So if it was true, we use a short three point line, which would be college, but we don't want that. So we do it false um, and then control return. Uh, let's do this. Oh, I forgot the S, that's why, court themes. So here is what, I'll just do this one. Um, the basic or plot court gives us, that's what we did in that function. Um, so then we go from there. So our first line is G on point, which is a GG plot um, plotting function, uh, which is for, sometimes you do scatter plots. So basically we're just putting a scatter plot on the court. Um, so we want GG, G on point. I can type this one out too, just to go through it. Uh, G on point, then our data. So you, first you put your data um, and we have our final Durant. Uh, and then we have our AES, uh, which is like kind of what we tell it to go off of. Um, so we need an X variable and a Y variable. So our X is called X, which is the X locations of our shots. And then our Y is our Y locations of our shots. So um, if you name them that, it's kind of easier to keep track of. So then this can also tell us or tell, we will tell them what color we want the circles to be or the, uh, the 
points. Um, so if we do final Durant, just to make sure it goes off that data set. Um, and like I said, we we're gonna use is shot made. So it's at the bottom, yep. So we'll do that for color and fill. So fill will be the inside of the circle and color will kind of be the ring on the outside just to give it an extra touch. Um, All right. So we'll do uh, this one just so you guys can see it. This, I know this one works already. Um, and then this is still in the geom point. I just kind of dropped it down to make it easier. So this is just the size of the circle. You can play with that. The shape, um, 21 is just a circle. And the stroke is like how how thick you want the circle to be. So just playing with it, I found that 0.5 looks good. Um, so then I'll do both of these at once. So scale color manual is what we will tell the color um, function to go off of. So since ish, I'll show you, is shot made has two, two variables. It can either be true or false. So we need to have two colors. So one for true, one for false. Uh, so, yep, this is color. This refers back to color. So aesthetics equals color. Um, so if it's made, the inside will be green four, which is just a, a, a lighter green. Um, and then if it's false, so if it's a missed shot, it'll be red three, which is just a color. Uh, for red, um, red two, I believe, is lighter. Red one is the lightest. And then I'll talk about this later, but labels, this kind of just when we have our legend, which we will have at the top right here, will tell us if it's made or missed. Um, so if we run all this together now, oh, let me take out this. So this is what we get. Um, so this looks pretty bad right here now, but uh, uh, we'll clean that up. So you have, sometimes it's a little weird, like the misses will be plotted on top of the makes, which isn't great, but um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven made three. So the data worked out um, and it looks good from here, but uh, we wanna make sure it looks better. Um, next one is scale X continuous. So we can put limits on um, the quartz, so we can kind of like cut off the sides, which negative 27 to 27.5 will do. So I will run that, gotta add my thing up here, and you'll see the difference. Oh, maybe not yet, maybe we need the Y. So this will cut off the top for the Y. There we go. So um, that's just one way to kind of change how it looks already. Um, and I think it looks really good, kind of more like minimalistic and less lines so from here it looks pretty good now we'll just like go into the theme and and um what's it called clean up this legend and then add a title so a theme um a theme function is holds many arguments um so as you see we have a few i'll go through each one so first is plot title uh equals and then so the title will be text. So you want to type in element text. Um, H just equals 0 0.5. 0 0.5 means to the left side of the plot is zero, the right is one. So 0 0.5, we will have a centered plot or centered title. Size 22 is just the size that I found works best. Family is what text family. Like I said earlier, I use Comic Sans. And then this makes it bold. So the font face bold. And then V just is move, you can move the text vertical. Um, so negative four moves it down a bit. Um, and then we'll go into the plot subtitle, uh, which is very similar. The size is just smaller. Um, and I have the thing, the V just, since it's smaller, you gotta move it down more. And then legend position. So this is, this is considered the legend. So this tells us if it's made or missed. And we're gonna want that 0.5. So this is the X position of it, 0.5 is right in the middle, um, and then 0.85, so from the bottom is zero, top is one, we're gonna have it just around the top, um, and then legend direction equals horizontal, so it's already horizontal, but if you 
change the position sometimes if it messes up. So we just want to make sure that we tell um, tell it to make sure that it's horizontal all the way. Uh, legend title um, is element blank. So the title is this portion right here. Um, and we don't want that. It's just don't need it. It uh, looks better without it. So element blank basically tells it to uh, disappear. So that's great. Um, and then legend text, which is um, this right here. So the made in the mist. So I believe I did the same size as the subtitles just to keep it um, similar. And then, so yeah, that's all the theme stuff we have just to kind of mess with the plot, make it look a little better. Um, so I'll run that. I'm not sure how much will change or if it'll work without. Okay, yeah, so there we have it. Um, as you can see, it looks a lot better. Um, we still haven't typed or given it the title yet. So um, we'll do that now. So GG title uh, is what we use for titles and subtitles. So then once you have that, you can do label, um, which is the main title. So I did Kevin Durant versus not Brooklyn. Um, it was Milwaukee. Um, and then the subtitle, you can do whatever you want. Sometimes I um, change it based on what the, the performance was. So I had 30 points, four rebounds, seven for 10, three points, kind of just the overview of his performance. And then the date. Um, so yeah, this gives it, it will look a little, um, might run off in the consoles or in this uh, um, markdown file. But once I get to the part where we save it to a file, it'll, um, it'll, it'll look more normal. So if it looks a little messed up here, don't worry until you save it. And then you can go back after if it, it still looks a little weird as a, as a PNG. Um, so like I said, cowplot earlier, I mentioned the package. Uh, we will use that just to fill in this background. So we will put this back into um, a figure. So if we run this, it won't pop up again, but then it's now in this little um, figure in here. So GG draw is a cow plot function. Um, so we're taking that and then just basically adding another theme to it, which is um, the plot background. So if we run it all again, that looks a lot better. Um, so yeah, we have our, our final um, NBA shot chart. Uh, and now all we have to have left is to save it. So GG save is the function to save whatever latest plot you have. Um, so I'm just gonna name it, you have to put in parentheses, just Durant, and then this tells it what file it is, and I do the PNG picture, um, and then height equals six, width equals six, just to make sure it's a, um, same height and width, just to make sure it's not stretched um, in any way. And then DPI 300, which is just the resolution, just to make sure it looks crisp. So control return, we will run that and it saves. Um, and then I usually just comment it out just to make sure, which is just a hashtag. So like if you run anything, um, that line won't be run just to make sure if I make a change, I'm not saving it over the last file. Um, so we will go. So this is the, the folder where I had it already in. Um, click it. And there, see, it looks a lot better. The, um, title is more centered and not as big. So that is the final product of an NBA shot chart. Um, you can play with a lot more, change the colors wherever the scale, scale color manual and scale film manual was. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a base to go off of and kind of go with it. Um, so yeah, we'll get right into, I'll spend less time on the plotting for the college one just because we went through it already. It's the same function pretty much. Um, so we'll just go to the NCA data. So as I talked about earlier, we have the NCA hoop R, um, which is created by Luke Benz, who's really awesome Twitter follow. Make sure to like Owen, get following him. Um, and this goes off ESPN data. So the function we want to look at is get schedule. Um, we'll do Syracuse, my team, shout out to guys. Um, and then we'll do last season and we'll send this into a data frame called Q schedule. So we, we just want to find out the ID of a game we want to look at. 
so I know Buddy. Um, I was lucky enough to go up, or I know Buddy went off in the San Diego State game, and I was lucky enough to be there. So we will use this game ID um, to pull his shots from that game. So double click Command C, or you can just do left copy. Um, or okay, never mind. <laughs> So we will use Q schedule, which is this that we looked at. Um, and then dollar sign, then you can go after the dollar sign, you can choose a column to look at. Um, so we'll be looking into this column game ID and there are 32 games. So we wanna look at all 32. Um, and then this will give us all the IDs of that game. So what's that? Um, okay, yeah, so now we have Q's IDs. So we have all 32 in here. Um, so then if we use get shot locations, which is the, a function from the, the NCA who bar package, so we can get the shot locations of both teams from every Q's game this year. And we'll send it back in the Q shots. Um, uh, no. All right, so I'm back. I figured out what the problem was. We had 32 here, but in the Q schedule, where it says 32, but it skips from 7 to 10 here. So I had to go back in and go from 1 to 28. Um, so we're looking at games 1 through 28. That will give us the, the IDs um, right here. Then we can run get shot locations with the IDs for every game now. And this will run for a good bit. Um, so you could look at it another way where you could just go here um, and look at like the San Diego State game and just copy and paste that one and put it into here. So that would return it just for one game. But I always think it's better to grab the whole season worth of data. Um, that way you can kind of just filter it easy instead of having to just scrape shot locations every single time. So um, we'll run through this or we'll wait for this to run. And um, then we'll look into a single game data based on, on what Buddy's doing. And I'll also show you guys when we make this one down here. Um, that should be an CA chart. I'll show you how to change the background color um, in case you don't want to have it dark gray. Because uh, I know some people like to make a lighter lighter color or whatnot, but uh, you can look into that. All right, so we now have data for all 28 games for Syracuse um, in this data frame up here. Q shots, um, so we can kind of filter by team name, um, date, outcome, shooter, uh, whether it's a three-pointer, and then here's our X and Y, um, and then game ID. So, like we said, or I said earlier, when I look at the San Diego State game, uh, so yeah, here we will filter by game ID, but also shooter equals Buddy Beheim. Um, so, yeah, we, we're gonna once again look into this data frame that we just made, uh, pipe it, so we can then tell the program to look at that data set and then filter um, the filter command. And then we enter what we want to filter by. So shooter equals buddy at Bayheim and then the game that we run now, third and eight called buddy, just to make it easier. And there we go. We got all 15 of the shots in that game. Um, and then one thing about NCAA Hoop Bar, it takes ESPN's data. So our court dimensions, our X are from negative 25 to 25. Um, and there's go from zero to 50. Uh, so we need to subtract 25 from all of these. Uh, so we will do that here in this first line. So we look at buddy, pipe it, and then mutate, which is basically the, the tidyverse command to, to basically either add, subtract, multiply, or whatever to, to your data. So we'll send that back into the same data frame to override the X act or the X variable. Um, we don't have to on this data set, but sometimes, since we're only looking at half of the court, ESPN's data looks into the other side of the court. So the Y variables will be flipped. So they'll be like 
instead of zero to 47, it can go all the way up to 94. So um, I'll leave this in here so when you guys look at the code, uh, we don't need this. But um, if it is instead of like zero to 47, it's 47 to 94, you just run this line um, and it will subtract it and make sure that it fits the dimension of our code. So now we have all buddy shots. Um, and yeah, it's the same, pretty much the same thing as before, except at data, you have to change to the buddy data frame. And then for the color and the fill, um, instead of looking at is shot made, our variable here is outcome. So the outcome will be made or missed. Um, so you just have to change these two right here. And then everything else is the same. I mean, obviously you can change it, text size and text color, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I will run this. And it should, yep, looks the same. So yeah, it's pretty much once you get the data, the same exact thing. Uh, I'll, I'll save it just to see what it comes out like. Should come out the same exact thing as the right? Yep. There it is. So looks really good. Uh, but I, I will show you how you guys can change the background. So our PowerPoint theme um, automatically makes the background dark gray or gray 20, which I use primarily in all of my graphics. Um, but if you add, so if you want to add another line of theme, you have to do comma to, to end that line and then enter uh, and panel background is a command in the theme and that will be the the court so you do element rect because it's an object um fill and then so i know corn silk is a light theme or light color that i sometimes use i will see what it does so it should make it light oh i saved it on accident um let's see Okay, yeah, there you go. So that's how you change it. I mean, you could change it to pretty much anything. Um, so this won't look good, but yeah, that just shows what it does. If you do corn silk, so fill, that would be that, and then color so it should be outside. And then you have to change this too, since that's the, yeah. So um, and then to finish it, plot, background um element rect fill equals corn silk and we can change this to corn silk as well so this should be completely light mode yeah so um you would have to do color i guess here you obviously have to change all the text um colors and the, the legend colors um to make it look better but that's just another at least shows you how to um, change it if you guys want to. You don't have to use a dark gray that I prefer, but um, it's kind of just your preference. So we will go back to what we had. Let us save it again. Uh, where did that go? So, okay. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the college aspect of it. I will show you guys our two final products. So we got Buddy and Durant here. Yeah, so um, I'll move my camera. Um, yeah, this wraps up the tutorial. Uh, thanks again um, to McKay for, for collabing on this. He's an awesome guy. Make sure you go check out his work and um, look through that and give him a follow on Twitter. Um, and feel free to reach out to me on Twitter about um, whether if it's you're going through this and have questions and then it's not working for you or um, if you if you want to let me know what you want to see next I don't have any uh, preferences so um, we can just kind of go through that if you want um, and yeah I'm not sure how, how often I'll be able to make these but it, it was really cool going through it the first time um, I'm hoping I'll get better at it and I hope this kind of makes sense already um, a little bit so yeah that that will wrap it up and uh Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.